All right, hello everybody. Uh, my name is Trevor Ivey and I am an educator here in the Sumter community. And like many of you, um, faced with uncertainty uh, with all of the uh, outbreak of the coronavirus and wondering what I can do to actually contribute uh, in a value-added impact way for my community. So, uh, as a good educator will do, I thought about uh, uh, doing a read-aloud each night. And so, uh, wanted to test this out and see if this is something that will have a good response here in our community. Um, if you know me, you know uh, I love children. I love seeing uh, kids smile. Uh, and at the heart of teaching and learning uh, is being a good reader. And so I want to try to do this uh, read aloud each night around 8 o'clock uh, each evening, kind of like a bedtime story, if you will. Uh, so I haven't really promoted it much, but uh, hopefully it'll pick up steam and we can end each night uh, during this time away from our regular teaching and learning environment and, uh, with a read aloud. So uh, I wanted to start our uh, first read aloud off with one of my favorite books. It's called Iggy Peck, the Architect. And, and so boys and girls, uh, if you are with me and you see the front cover of my book, um, good readers always ask themselves some questions before they start reading. So they take a moment to look at the front cover of the book. They might do something called a picture walk, which is a great strategy, uh, just to see if this is a book that might interest themselves. Uh, they might try that five word rule to see if this is a book that I should be reading. Um, but after you've done the picture walk, you wanna look at the front cover of the book, uh, the title Iggy Peck, The Architect, and you'll see some names on the front cover of the book. And you have to ask yourself, hmm, I see a couple of names. In this case, Iggy Peck, the architect, has two names on the front cover of the book. Let me read it for you just in case you can't see it. It says, by Andrea Beatty, illustrated by David Roberts. So good readers are thinking to themselves, hmm, who are these people? Can you think about who these people are? Does anyone know who these people are? Well, if you guess that the first person's name, Andrea Beatty, is a person called the author, you are correct. And the word in front of the person's name, by, tells us that it is the author. And if you look at the second name, and if you thought to yourself, this is an illustrator... Hmm, you are absolutely correct because it actually tells us illustrated by David Roberts. So, so the last thing a good reader would ask themselves before they start reading the book is how can I classify this book? Well, we classify books into two categories. It's either fiction or nonfiction. So think to yourself, boys and girls, is this fiction or nonfiction based upon what I see on the front cover of the book? I'll let you think to yourselves for a moment. Did you guess right? Did you back it up with facts? It is fiction. And the front cover illustration kind of gives it away for us. And we know that this book is going to tell us a story. And it probably is not real. It doesn't give us any facts. So without any further ado, boys and girls, our first read aloud night with Dr. Ivy before you go to bed it's Iggy Peck, the architect. Let's find out what this book is about. Young Iggy Peck is an architect and has been since he was two. When he built a great tower in only an hour with nothing but diapers and glue. See how big that tower is? Good gracious, Ignatius, his mother exclaimed. That's the coolest thing I've ever seen. But her smile faded fast as a light wind blew past and she realized those diapers weren't clean. Ignatius, my son, what on earth have you done? That's disgusting and nasty. It stinks. But Iggy was gone. 
He was out on the lawn using dirt clods to build a great sphinx. See all the dirt? But when Iggy turned three, his parents could see his unusual passion would stay. He built churches and chapels from peaches and apples and temples from modeling clay. At dinner one night, to his father's delight, Iggy got a bright gleam in his eye. And he went out on the porch and he built the St. Louis Arch from pancakes and coconut pie. Dear Ig, it made it until second grade when his teacher, her name was Miss Lala Greer, on the very first day she had this to say. We do not talk of buildings in here. Gothic or Romanesque, I couldn't care less about buildings, ancient or new. She said in her lecture tone about architecture that it had no place in this here grade two. I wonder how young Ignatius feels right now. How do you think she feels? Huh? Well, he probably doesn't feel very happy right now because this is his passion, right? This is what he likes to do to build things, to tap into his curious side. Let's keep reading. That might seem severe, but Miss Lala Greer was being sincere. For when she herself was no more than seven, she had a great fright at a dizzying height in a building so tall it scraped heaven. On an architect's tour of the 95th floor, young Lila got lost from the group. Wonder how Miss Lila felt. Hmm. Probably worried him. She was found two days later, stuck in an elevator, eating cheese with a French circus troupe. After that day, it's quite safe to say that she thought all building lovers were absolutely nuts. And as a teacher, she thought that above all, one ought to avoid them. No ifs, ands, or buts. So as you might guess, it would cause little Iggy some stress to hear such terrible talk. But he didn't hear. He sat in the rear while building a castle of chalk. You, Iggy Pet, your desk is a wreck, Miss Lila Greer said. Tear down that castle right now. You will not build in here. Is that perfectly clear? Do you need to go see Principal Howe? Mm, I wonder how young Iggy felt. Probably not so happy. No, ma'am, Iggy said as he lowered his head and his heart sank down to the floor. With no chance to build, his interest was killed. Now second grade was just a bore. But after 12 long days that passed in a haze of reading, writing, and arithmetic, Miss Lila Greer took the class to Blue River Pass for a hike and an old-fashioned picnic. Sounds like a fun field trip. I wonder what is going to happen. Hmm. What do you think is going to happen? Let's find out. As they crossed an old trestle to a small island nestled in the heart of a bubbling stream, but they no sooner passed and the footbridge collapsed and Miss Lila Greer started to scream. We're trapped here. Oh my, alas, kids, goodbye. Her eyeballs rolled to the back of her head. She dropped to the ground with a vague groaning sound. Luckily, she fainted. She wasn't dead. The class was amazed that they stood there quite dazed, uncertain of what they should do. 
But one bright young man was off hatching a plan, which started with Miss Lala's shoe. Soon each lad and lass there at Blue River Pass was working together as one. Look at all the boys and girls working together to solve a problem. Does anyone want to predict who was the one who hatched the plan? Hmm. If you say Iggy, I think you're right. Let's find out. And when she came to, Miss Lila Greer knew that something quite brave had been done. Look at her waking up. She looked in the air and saw hanging there a structure with cables and braces. And on the far side, beaming with pride, were 17 young smiling faces. Boots and tree roots and strings, fruit roll-ups and all sorts of things, some of which one should not even mention. They were stretched ridge to ridge in a glorious bridge, dangling from shoestring suspension. Look at this, what they built. It all became clear to young Miss Lila Greer as she crossed that bridge over the stream. There are worse things to do when you're in grade two than to spend your time building a dream. Hmm. Wonder how Miss Lila Greer feels now. Now, every week at Blue River Creek Elementary in second grade, all the school kids can hear, along with Miss Lila Greer, how the world's greatest buildings were made. The weekly guest speaker in t-shirt and sneakers talks of buildings from Rome to Quebec. Of course, he's the guy who builds towers from pie. That brilliant young man, Iggy Peck, the architect. The end. Well, those boys and girls and parents who have joined us for our first read aloud, uh, I hope that you enjoyed it. It's one of my favorite books, and hopefully you're starting to think about what the moral to this story is. And it's all about having passion, right? Having passion for something that you love to do. And when you do have passion, boys and girls, it's going to shine through just like it did for Iggy Peck. No matter all the people in the world who might be against you and think that you're just wasting your time, when you dream and you dream big, and just like my fifth grade teacher, Miss Smith, told me, you dream big and and you shoot for the moon, and you'll be certain to land somewhere among the stars. So we'll continue to do our read-alouds uh, each night around 8. Uh, that's my intention throughout our time of uncertainty while we're out of school. Uh, this provides a little bit uh, more structure, perhaps, uh, for some. Uh, but spread the word. Uh, we'll be featuring new books uh, each night, and uh, new genres, and, uh, and we'll try to make it um, as engaging as possible. Uh, but please leave some feedback uh, for me. Um, shoot me a message. Uh, share this with a friend or on your page each night at 8 o'clock uh, for Mr. Ivy's Read Aloud. And remember, boys and girls, and if no one has told you that they love you today, Mr. Ivy is telling you that he loves you. Have a good night, everybody. Sweet dreams.